Hello guys, today I want to present to you my new online course launched just yesterday, which is the second course in January 23 and the second text form course after this one about AWS, which was released a week ago. This week I've released another kind of a huge tutorial divided into chapters, building Laravel API from scratch for kind of a real application. So imagine you have a mobile application of car parking or perhaps front-end client and you need the Laravel API for that. So I've tried to imagine that situation and created that API from scratch in 10 lessons, in total 10,000 words. But again, instead of publishing in one huge tutorial, I've divided that into chapters and actually even from your feedback from the first course and from my premium tutorials in 2023, I noticed that text form content is easier to consume when it's presented properly. So that's what I'm trying to do on Laravel Daily Com in 23 and beyond. It's pretty weird to talk on YouTube about text form content, but don't worry, I'm still here on YouTube. I still keep shooting daily videos for you guys on YouTube. Just with courses and tutorials, I will mix between video and text format. So today, let's quickly run through the first lessons of how to build Laravel API. So I will show you inside of the course, the first two lessons. And if you want the full course, subscribe to Laravel Daily Com premium membership yearly or monthly. The link will be in the description below. So in the course, we're creating these functionalities. I will zoom it in so you would see better. So register and login for the user and we will use Laravel Sanctum for that. Managing profile, managing vehicles, which is cars and then get prices for zones of parking and then start stop parking and calculating the price. Pretty minimal, but it covers all the basics that you need for Laravel APIs. So we start from functionality and this is by the way how I start generally applications. I take out, believe it or not, pen and paper and try to draw things. And most of the times I start with entities with database structure, which results in something like this. Only then I go to computer to create that as Laravel models and migrations. So after the schema is kind of done on paper, I go to terminal to generate everything in Laravel structure. So model, migrations, and model fillable, another model. This is interesting thing, by the way, for parking zones, I decided to create those zones, the green, yellow, red with pricing immediately in the migration. This is debatable. This is personal preference. In this case, I think this will likely never change. So I run the data with the migration in the same file. You could create a separate seeder for that and call that in the seeds. But for this simplistic case, I think it is more straightforward. So a tip for you, you can run eloquent operations in the migrations, not just creating the schema. So creating all the models, all the migrations, so all the database schema field by field. Also stopping on the cast, by the way, for start time and stop time, since later we would need to transform that and make some calculations for pricing or transform to different format, it's better to have casts as date time. So those database fields when presented from the database would be automatically transformed to carbon objects like created at and updated at by default in Laravel. So we add a few more to that list and there's a separate article for that. I will link that as well in the description below. So now after we run artisan migrate and generate the schema with dbeaver in my case, this is the digital form of the same thing you saw earlier. So the first lesson is preparation before the API. So nothing about API yet, but database schema is of course the core of the project. And in the lesson two, we're getting to the registration API. So let's quickly run through that lesson as well. We use Laravel Sanctum on the backend, but for now it doesn't matter that much. So first we create the registration API endpoint and a few things important here. V1 and auth are subfolders. And this is how I like to structure APIs. So every API, in my opinion, should have V1, so version from the very beginning. Even if you're not planning version two yet or version one point something, start versioning from the very first version. And then you may structure your endpoints and controllers with folders. So the endpoint kind of a folder corresponds to this controller name. So inside of that register controller, I made it invocable controller because it's just one method of registration, one endpoint. It's a single action controller is called and inside we have invoke. Then we have a route. In routes API, we have 
supposed to auth register to that controller. And another quick tip for you. So these courses, by the way, they often contain not just the main topic information, but a lot of along the way or by the way topics. So for example, did you know that you can do use not for specific controller, but for the whole namespace and then add that namespace here for more controllers. So there will be auth login controller and maybe others. Let's move on. What do we have next? In the route service provider, we need to change the prefix for API v1. So it would be applicable to all the routes in routes API PHP. And then our first call off that endpoint via postman client returns 200 OK, although nothing happens yet. We have invoke method, which is called successfully, returns OK with empty body. So this is our first successful API call, but now let's actually fill in the register controller. And this is that method. First validation, you can create a form request class for that if you wish, but I'm kind of mimicking the logic of Laravel Breeze, which has inline validation like this. Similarly, we create the user, we create the event again, similarly idea from Laravel Breeze to have registered, which may have listeners like email verification or others. And then this is where we get to important things about API. So after registering the user, what should we return to the mobile client or to front end client? We're using Laravel Sanctum and for Laravel Sanctum, it's this method. We are creating a token which will be passed with every consequent request for logged in users as a bearer token. So we create a token for a specific device, which we get from user agent, or it could be passed manually. And then we return that access token as part of the JSON with status code. This is another tip, by the way. So response HTTP created corresponds to HTTP status code 201, which means created user. You can return to 100 if you wish, or you can return the number if you wish. But it's an interesting practice to have readable, human readable HTTP status codes returned. If we scroll down, this is our first failed request. So this is what happens if you don't provide any data, for example. This is important as in all APIs, the status codes. So 422 is automatically returned for validation error. And this is the JSON structure for all the errors combined. But if it's successful, with all the parameters, then we have access token generated by Laravel Sanctum. So we have registered new users, and this is the token that should be passed with every request for that user. This is the list of those status codes. Those come from Symfony, by the way, so you can use them in Laravel projects as well. And also one more thing that we will change. This won't be visible for now, but for clients like Vue and React, as one of the method of authentication, you can support credentials. By default in Laravel, it is false but we're changing that to true. So yeah, these are two lessons from that course. If you want the full course, go to Laravel Daily Com, subscribe to the membership and get this course and a lot more premium tutorials. In 2023, I'm on fire with new content. If you haven't noticed, if you follow me on Twitter, you see how much stuff I publish and also two courses per month, AWS and this one. So join me on the journey if you haven't yet and see you guys in other videos.